Welcome everyone to the AIS Ask an Architect video series. My name is Mariah Tobin um, and I'm here today with Tammy Eaglebull of Encompass Architects here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, so thank you Tammy for being here uh, with us. So the first thing we should uh, start off with having you tell the students a little bit about yourself, your background, um, and how you got interested in studying architecture. Sure. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, so I'm from, uh, I grew up in Aberdeen, South Dakota. Um, I went to school at Arizona State and University of Minnesota. Um, I'm a member of the Oval Dakota Nation, and my family is from Pine Ridge, South Dakota. Um, I decided to become an architect when I was really young. I, my dad wanted to be an architect, so he had a lot of um, books and, and uh, like textbooks in the basement, and I used to look at those. And he would talk to me a lot about um, the disparity between the community I grew up in, which was basically white middle class America, and the community that my family lived in, which was on the reservation in Pine Ridge. And so I, as a young child, I remember noticing the difference between our schools and our houses and you know, kind of the whole community looked different. And, and um, so I remember early on, he and I having those discussions and him talking about um, the importance of architecture and, and um, the need for Native American architects. Yeah. Um, so you are you are now a part owner of Encompass Architects. Uh, what kind of work does the firm typically do? We, um, we formed Encompass Architects to work with tribal communities, um, but over the years we've um, been diversifying and doing a lot more mainstream um, architecture. So right now we're doing a lot of mixed use work in Lincoln. Um, we do public school work. We do a, still do a lot of tribal work, um, including tribal schools, detention facilities, um, pretty much anything a tribe needs. Yeah. Uh, so how might one start to advocate uh, for the preservation and the respectful representation of these Native American cultures? It's, I think, you know, especially in architecture, one of the things I've realized over my career is that um, as tribes are pursuing their self-determination and sovereignty issues in governance and in the economy and in jobs and police force and all these issues that they are starting to have control over again, the one area that is kind of been forgotten is the built environment. Um, you go to tribal communities, no matter where you are in the country, they all kind of look the same. They have the same kind of government building that's not really contextual. They have um, you know, the HUD housing, they have, um, it, well, the, and the communities tend to reflect the negative aspects of that culture, the poverty, the unemployment, and so I feel like it's, it's up to us as architects to help turn that around and help um, tribes take control over the built environment so that it does start to reflect their cultural values and their community values. And then that, in turn, I believe, will lead to cultural pride. It will lead to um, ownership in the environment so that these issues like vandalism and, and um, um, maintenance will, um, right now, buildings get really run down because people don't really have ownership in them. And so those kind of issues, I think, will, will turn around. And that, that, in turn, will lead people to feel pride in their communities. All right, so most of our viewers here are students, so do uh, you have any uh, good advice for students who want to try and push diversity in their education or even in their internships and in their future professions? I think um, it's, it's about speaking up. I think um, you know, diversity is one of those issues that people kind of give a lot of lip service to, like, oh yeah, we're for diversity, we support diversity, but what does that really mean, you know, the activist, right? So, um, for me, it's, it's about each individual, when you say you support diversity, or if you if you um, don't necessarily, you, know, you might not ever come and say I just support diversity, but you're you're not against diversity. It's about accepting everybody. So when you have a person of color or a diverse um, lifestyle um, person in your office, is, is just treating them as if they are, you know, treating them like you treat everybody else, and accepting everybody for their unique talents and their unique outlook on life and. And you know, so that's the individual thing. And I think in terms of bringing it into institutions like you know, architecture schools, and it's it's about speaking up to you, to the administration and letting them know that as students, that's what you want in your education. You want um, courses that that start to address these issues. Like one of the things that I'm always really amazed at is you know, on this continent, the first architects were the Native Americans and the indigenous people of, of North America. 
but there is, in architecture school, in our architecture history classes, it's maybe just a little footnote, yeah. something we talk about. Maybe they'll mention Chapel Hill. Yeah, mention in passing. Yeah, they'll mention in passing. You know, that, that's a whole you know, wealth of information that should be a separate class. Yeah. You know, so those type of issues, you know, like speaking up to your to your administration and asking for those type of those type of courses that, that address these issues. Most definitely. Uh, so how is being a, a Native American and a woman a part of this uh, your Ogallala Lakota Nation really impacted you and impacted your design work? Well, I think being um, just a woman in general, and, and it's really kind of a strong trait in Native American women is this idea of, of community. And working together for a greater good. Um, in Native American communities, especially my community, it's matriarchal, so everything kind of flows from the woman's family, and the woman is seen as the head of the household and is responsible for, yeah, is responsible for for the, the well-being of the family and thus the community. Um, the other interesting thing that that um, is that in in Native American societies and in my culture, Native American women were the ones who designed the structures and who took care of the structures and built the structures and they own those structures. Wow. So, you know, they were, you could say, the first architects. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I think that I, that feeling of, of doing, doing something for the greater good and, and always considering the, the larger impact it has in the community has affected mm -hmm. how I do architecture. Um, I am always concerned concerned about what this project is going to do for the community and how it's going to affect everything else in the community. It's, when you're doing a project in Native American um, communities, it's not just that project. It's, it affects more than just that piece of land that you're putting that building on. It affects the whole community in, in, in it's a, hopefully in a good way, so you always have to make sure that you're taking into account um, you know, what's best for the community and not just that yeah. project. Yeah, kind of just touching back on Having them, they have private structures, so right. they're not there's you know no vandalism or anything because they're right. proud to have that right there. So we try to involve everybody. We invite everybody, we invite the whole community to these meetings because even though they may not work in that structure or have schools that go or have kids who go to that school, they're going to be interested in it because it's going to have such a big impact. Yeah. So uh, you recently kind of spoke about this at the AI National Convention. Uh, you uh, congratulations on winning the Whitney M. Uh, uh, junior, young, Whitney Young, yeah, Whitney M. Young Jr. Junior. Junior. <laughs> it's <laughs> really <laughs> long. Yeah, it's an awful. Uh, so yeah, you, you spoke at, in New York. So how was that experience for you? It was pretty wild. I mean, you know, as, a, as an architect, you never, it never even enters your mind that I want to play Radio City Music Hall. You know, so yeah. <laughs> speaking at, at Radio City was really mind blowing. It was. It's such a beautiful venue, and it's big and. To have it packed, and then to know, you know, to be told, like right before I was going on stage, they told me that there was three thousand people in an overflow situation at the convention center. Yeah. <laughs> so they're like, so you're speaking to like ten thousand people. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, thanks for telling me that. As I'm walking on. Yeah. Um, Maybe you should wait until it's done. Yeah. Yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. So, but it was pretty amazing. It was, um, it was uh, really humbling to, to, to and after I was. A, Notified that I, I won the award, I started to do a lot of research into Whitney and Young. I kind of knew peripherally who he was, and I think uh, people have heard of this award, but they don't really know who he was. And so, learning about kind of his impact um, in you know, the 1960s in the civil rights movement, and that he was you know a contemporary of Martin Luther King and Jesse Jackson and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And in fact, he was like right in that group for all those major events that they did. But he was kind of, um, you know, obviously lesser well known. Yeah. Um, but that he had such an impact on our profession that it was, it was um, really humbling to to uh, to learn who he was and, and then to be to, to get this award. Um, so, so when you're not working and traveling, which I know you do a lot of, um, what do you do for fun? Got any hobbies or fun books you're reading right now? I always have a few books going at the same time. I like to read um, like uh, true crime, like crime crime novels, yeah. and I like to read spy novels. I also always have like some kind of biography going. Right now, I'm reading um, a biography on Margaret Thatcher. Um, so I always have like a lot of like. And I'm also reading, going through and reading the, the Lord of the Rings books. <laughs> yeah. I like those movies. I'm like, reading them as a whole different, oh, yeah. a whole different thing. It's a, that's a little 
little slow reading, so I always have a you know four or five books going at the same time. I also like I do like to travel, like for pleasure. I do travel a lot for, for work, but I do like to travel for pleasure, take photos. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I think we just got uh, one question here. We'll leave our audience with: uh, Do you have any advice for current architecture students, or even high school students entering into their architectural educations? I think um, it's. For me, it's seeing it's the students is, I, I wish that the craft of drawing would still be strong, a hand drawing and, and having that artistic side of architecture. I think that's something, um, you know, as, as the profession has moved into using technology more, computers more, um, the idea of just sitting down and sketching an idea and or being able to use, you know, bum wad and trace and, you know, yeah. and draw something. It's a little lost. It's kind of lost. And, Clients, you know, from what I see, clients really appreciate that, that you're able to kind of think on the fly in meetings and, and you know, not always have to be like, okay, well, I'll redraw yeah. that up, come back It's very to hard for them to visualize in 3D what you're yeah. saying, like, this is a plan, this is what it looks like, yeah. being able to yeah. so perspective can, sketch. If you can perspective sketch or just like, oh, hey, what if this would work better, and then sketch it out well, you know, in the moment, that's something that, that I would like to see is it could be brought back a little bit. Um, so I would encourage students and high school students to kind of keep up that artistic side. Don't yeah. get, you know, the computer's good, you have to know the computer, you have to use it as a tool, mm -hmm. but your pencil's also a tool also. Yeah. And don't stop because you think you're bad. You right. want to get better because right. you practice and you keep working at it. So. Being artistic is not <laughs> a natural talent, it's something that you have to work yeah. at, you have to keep practicing. Yeah. All right, well thank you for your time here, I'm sure the students will uh, be intrigued to learn a little bit more about your story. and. Hopefully, maybe they'll get excited and want to come to Nebraska and see all of our architecture that we got going on here. I'm sure your office would love to give them a tour. Yes, if anyone wants to come in Lincoln, Nebraska, at the Haymarket District. <laughs> all right. See you guys later.